Stole this car from Tony just before he could deliver the shield back to Cap. Spider-Man always said that this thing defies the laws of physics. Should we find out if he's right? Whoa. Whoa. Wow. Okay, I better not do that again. Guys, welcome back to RBR. And today we have Iron Man's new car, or I should say, I guess Iron Man's last car, and that is Audi's brand new EV, the e-tron GT here in top dog form of the e-tron RS GT. And in my estimation, it is the best looking EV out there at the moment, bar none. Audi say that it's the new spearhead and flagship of the entire brand. And it's built in fact in the same facility as their last flagship, the Audi R8 in the Bollinger Hof facility, which should betray something. And I want to start with a statement. I actually think that this is the best Audi RS car that I've driven in modern times. It is actually that good. The hype is real around the e-tron. There are some things that could be better, but as a general package, I've been so impressed. I can't wait to show you every single detail. It is no secret that the car shares its J1 platform with Porsche's Taycan, and a lot of the components are shared between the cars, but Audi are going for a more GT car, a more livable car, but with the same crazy performance, particularly in this RS version. So let's dive in, I'll peel back the skin, show you every bit of the car before we launch control and drive Tony Stark's last car in anger. Let's check it out, guys. So guys, once again, today's episode of RBI is sponsored by Manscaped, the company who cares about your balls. It's probably the most unexpectedly successful sponsor partner that we've ever had on RBR. And they're the company that care about male hygiene specifically. And last time I showed you the perfect 4.0 package, which comes with so much stuff. But this time I want to tell you about another product again to do with male hygiene. And that is the Weed Whacker. And this is a trimmer for your nose and your hair. Now that perfect 4.0 package includes the Weed Whacker with it. And as with our main trimmer, you can see it's waterproof. It's got the skin safe technology as well to stop nicks and cuts. And within it, you get this. Now this blade has a 9,000 RPM motor. Sounds a bit like a car, doesn't it? It's a 360 degree blade. It's totally water resistant. It's cordless, it's rechargeable. And if you get on the peak hygiene plan, you'll get replacement blades every three months as well. It's much safer and easier to use something like this to trim rather than trying to pull your brain out of your skull, which is quite painful. So guys, that's the perfect 4.0 package with the Weed Whacker. Go to manscaped.com and use the code RBR. You'll get 20% off plus free international shipping. Big thanks for supporting our sponsors, guys. And thanks to Manscaped for sponsoring this episode. It's funny, isn't it, that uh, Audi launched their last flagship at Tony's first appearance and then pretty much one of his last ones to uh, tie it all off. But it also shows you how serious they are about the e-tron GT. So guys, I think bar none, this is the best looking EV out there at the moment, particularly with regards to sedans. Audi have gone towards the idea of making something that's more familiar to us petrol heads in particular, rather than being, you know, a Buzz Lightyear spaceship. I'm talking to you specifically, Mercedes, with that stuff that you're making. But Audi, much, much more traditional. We'll go into the design element later. So that's a big first tick box. If you're hesitant about this idea of the battery electric vehicle, it looks familiar. Now, as far as the underpinnings go, as I said, it shares the platform with the Taycan, which is the J1 EV platform. So a lot of the under part of the car and a lot of the components are shared to a very large degree between the two vehicles. That means this sits on the same 800 volt electric architecture. That means that the, that the actual chassis and the batteries and indeed even some of the motors, etc., are shared between them, but they're both going for different things. And the eventual drive between the two is actually quite different. Of course, being an Audi, this is a quattro car. And in this RS version in the sporty modes, it is more real bias, just as you would expect. Now, in terms of the batteries, just like we found in Taycan, this has got the 85 kilowatt battery that has 33 modules and it's affixed to the bottom of the car, nice low center of gravity around the foot garages, as we found in Taycan as well. This gives our rear occupants a lot of nice leg room while keeping that really nice sleek and low profile that you don't really see 
in that many EVs. So a good job of fitting a large battery inside a very sleek and sporty looking car like this. Then we come to the electric motors. And in this RS version, we've of course got two of them. One in the front, which provides some of the power and then a larger one in the rear. These are both permanently synchronous electric motors. They are permanently excited. And that means essentially they are more efficient than what we've seen more typically used in the Teslas because they are in an always alive position. Our rear also has a two speed transmission with the first gear being used for acceleration and the second gear for either more efficient driving or further reserves of power. The charge flaps on the e-tron GT, same positioning as the Taycan, so one on either side. And now suspension is where the cars diverge a little bit. As I said, Audi taking the route of being more of a GT car, a bit more supple even in our RS version here. So we have adaptive suspension as standard with a three camber air suspension here in the e-tron GT that adapts with the dampers depending on how you're driving. It also gives the car three different heights available as well. And finally, we have rear wheel steer as well, up to 2.8 degrees on the rear. So really at the face of it, so much shared with the Taycan. And this is kind of a fear that all of us have with EVs that even if they're not sharing platform, the basic idea is the same. And one factor that I can't really show here or equate to you is the software and all the thinking that Audi have put into it to make those components work for them the way they want it. And I can't show you that until we drive it. So we need to really feel that element. Next comes the brakes. So on our standard e-tron, we get the three 60 millimeter steels. On our RS, we get the four 10 millimeter carbide brakes, which have less brake dust and of course, better stopping power. And of course, you can get the carbon ceramics, which are of course lighter, and they are an optional extra on the RS as well. Now let's talk about the performance. Well, we have two models. First of all, the non-RS, which is the e-tron GT Quattro. That has 469 brake horsepower, 630 newton meters of torque, and a zero to 60 of 4.2 seconds. And it actually looks pretty good. I like the way that this normal version looks, particularly the wheels. And then our RS e-tron GT, well, this is more of a monster. Now this has 590 brake horsepower, but with launch control over boost, it's 637. The Newton meters are 830 and zero to 60 cut straight down to 3.3. Let's see how it does later in the video. So really, really good performance. The range, just like Taycan though, a little bit so-so. I'm gonna think real world average is gonna be something like 200, though they're quoting around about 230. Now let's get on to design because like I said, I think it's the best looking EV sedan, certainly. Um, the test for me on this litmus test is to turn the car around and let's add some exhaust to it. And you'd almost be convinced that this is the new RS7. It could be, right? Because it doesn't look like something alien to us, which is great. So immediately, very sporty, lots of lines, unlike Taycan, which is so simple. It's nice, but it is very simplistic. E-tron goes the other way, it goes the Audi way. Lots of cuts, maybe too many, like on the front wing. There's a lot going on near the charge flap. Um, and some of it doesn't make sense. But you look at the front end, and that grill with the indentations within it looks fantastic. The air intakes and the curtains on the side to push air aerodynamically through the sides also looks very, very aggressive. The bonnet has a lovely like U-shaped dip within it. Again, unique to this car. I absolutely love the lights of the e-tron. I mean, Audi make the best lights anyway, right? Be it front or rear when it comes to animation and shape. And these are no different. They're just like your typical Audi. Lovely animations, lovely shape. From the front, I mean, you can understand why this is replacing the R8. When you drive this car anywhere, be it London or wherever, it gets the looks because it's so low slung, it's so wide, it sits so well in its low its suspension mode. And to me, it just looks amazing. The side, again, very interesting. I like the cuts, I like the bigger side sills. I do like the front wing, even though it's a little bit weird. I don't like the wheels, I think they're horrible. Um, I mean, the whole thing, the wheels do match the concept that Tony drove, but that doesn't mean they're nice. I don't like, Audi makes some of the best alloys and I just think on their EV flagship, they've mucked this up. I think that could have been a lot better. I like the roof line. It doesn't, you know, scream Taycan to me. It's a bit more, it's a bit more Audi, which is nice. The rear is cool. Again, the rear lights, as I said, fantastic animation, totally Audi shape. Um, and then the rear diffuser, I think also better than Taycan. It's just got more aggression. There's more cuts. There's more of an aerodynamic feature there. It's, it's less forgettable. I can't remember what the Taycan one looks like 
Whereas this, the entire rear actually, really strong shoulders. Um, this is how I'd like the rear of a sedan to look. And the aerodynamic value, it's good. It's 0 0.24 CD. Uh, this figure is becoming more and more common in car reviews now, particularly with EVs, because it affects range. So that's pretty good for, for a car that's, you know, so angular. What do you guys think of this design? I mean, I really love it. I think it looks fantastic. I would love to see an estate version of this. And I don't mean like a cross Turismo like Porsche have done. I mean a genuine RS6 type e-tron GT RS6. I would love that. And I think it would take the market by storm. All they need to do is add some more bloody range in this particular platform of car. I think 200 is a little bit shy of where it should be. So guys, that's your e-tron GT RS. Fantastic looking car. We know the tech is brilliant, but has it got enough Audi in it? Well, we must start to answer that question by first going inside the car and checking out again what I think is the right way to do an EV interior today. I think it's only right to begin with a slow clap for Audi designers here. They're just nailing it, in my opinion, in terms of what the market is looking for. Not just on the exterior, as we discussed, apart from those wheels, but the interior as well. Now, the problem I have with the majority of new, particularly flagship EVs that say the EQS from Mercedes-Benz, you have this gigantic hyper screen, minimalistic everything, you know, no buttons, no this, that, the other, giant screens, and that is it. Or you look at that BMW iX monstrosity that you look at the interior and it looks like it belongs in the Louvre rather than in an actual vehicle. Tesla, of course, with their giant screens. And even to be fair, you look at something like Porsche Taycan, very minimalistic, two or three giant touch screens, and that's it. Every one of them just trying to invoke this idea of the future, touch screens, and all these fads that are coming into the vehicle space. But I do think they are just fads. When you look at the e-tron GT interior, it could pass off as the interior of the new RS6. Okay, it is just a good car interior. You've got lots going on rather than little going on. And in a lot of ways, it reminds me a lot of the R8, which is great. Um, we'll go on to seating position, which is very R8-like because of the batteries, but just the, the interestingness of the center console, like the vents here in the middle look great. You know, they look like almost a, the exhaust of a, of a hypercar in the way that they're shaped. You've got a good amount of buttons here, for the climate control, seat heating, etc., above that, which I like to see. I like to see buttons. I don't want to do everything in the touchscreen because with the Audi system, you are forced to do quite a bit on the touchscreen because there is no control knob here. That's a downside to the system. We'll get onto that in a minute. But look how interesting the center console is. Look at the dash. The dash is so angular. It's got so many cuts. We've got that same texture under the e-tron logo here as we had on the front grille which was that hexagonal texture, which is really, really nice. You've got the carbon fiber swooping across here, massive, massive piece of it. Look at the sharpness of the vent on the passenger side there. I mean, you could stab yourself with that. It, it's really sharp. The door cards, my favorite part, I think, of the interior, bizarrely. It's just the way they're so sculptured. And then when you close the door and you see the way the dashboard swoops around you, and you've got kind of, again, the sculpture kind of of, the carbon fiber that flows here, the door handle, all of this. I mean, you could have this in a Lamborghini and you would be very happy. It is very angular and it is very pleasing to my eyes. If Audi was doing what everyone else was doing, they'd just have a screen here, a screen here, none of these cuts, and it would be boring as hell. They haven't done that. They have instead given us what I think is probably, in terms of structure at least, the best looking EV interior, in my opinion. Um, what lets it down, I think, is two things. One is the driver zone. Um, while you do get some new screens, they are very minimalistic. And I always use Mercedes as the benchmark for this. And you compare the Mercedes digital screens to these ones, and these look like they're 10 years older. You know, they're just too simple, and there's just not enough customization and it doesn't reflect the quality of the interior inside or the exterior outside, or indeed, as you see later, 
the performance. I do like the new centralized um, Audi Sport display, that's very nice. You do get the option of the ones with the two dials on each side, and again, you can change the information, which is nice, because like you can't do it in some of the BMWs. So Audi have been using the digital cockpit probably longer than most. I would expect them to be at the forefront, they're not at the moment, and I think they need to work harder on this. It, it looks nice, it needs to look even better, all right? Same with the infotainment system here. I don't want to be forced to use touchscreens. There's been a study recently done that touchscreen use in cars is more dangerous than holding your phone. It's more dangerous than driving while under the influence of either drugs or alcohol. I just don't agree with this. I think it's too dangerous to be doing this while you should be looking ahead. Um, that being said, the buttons are nice and large on this. So you're not kind of fishing around when you're looking for something. And you do get some haptic sounds, etc., to know that you've made a click, which is good. In terms of the individualization of Audi Drive Select, you've got all the usual stuff like you find in your combustion engine. So drive system, suspension. You also have sound profile, which we'll get onto on the drive itself. So you can choose from subdued, balanced, and dynamic. And that is like the electric sports sound that you found in Taycan. And it's great that Audi have done that. that that's really well done. I'm glad that they did not make this a silent car like so many manufacturers are making the mistake of doing. Now, your seating position is very much like sitting in the Audi R8. If you can see where my knees are and how low we sit anyway, it feels very much like an Audi sports car. It feels like you're sitting in a TT or an R8. And I like the R8 comparison more. So I like it, I like it. The seats are great. Audi always make great sports seats. These are lovely, you see the RS logo embedded in them. Uh, the quality is as good as anything you'd find from Porsche, for example, or any other manufacturer. Again, the quality in the interior is fantastic. I love the carbon side sides, actually. It's a very nice touch. Now, the other thing that I didn't like as much, the steering wheel is just a bit boring to me. You haven't got your RS mode button, which would be great, because I keep having to fish over here in the drive select on this side to change it. I like having the RS mode button here. Um, it would have been nice if they gave the e-tron GT a unique steering wheel, like they've given it such a unique interior and a really cool exterior. I'm being slightly harsh on them. I mean, the paddles are much nicer than Audi have had in the past, but I would like to see them make a really, really cool steering wheel. Considering the rest of their design, they should, again, they should be number one on this type of thing. I like the start stop button, your typical Audi red ring as well. That's a nice little touch there. The gear selector is interesting. Um, I think it could be better. Uh, it, essentially, you move it back or forth, and as you can see, the car has come on now. The P button here isn't for park. Bizarrely, it's actually parking assistance. So to park, all I've been able to do is actually just turn the car off or open the door. Slightly weird, they should have just had a park button here. If I'm doing something wrong, I'd love to know in the comments, maybe I'm just being an idiot and I should have read things a little bit better, which is entirely possible. Ambient lighting is nice. I think they could have gone further with it. It's nice that the e-tron logo lights up, uh, like Audi logos light up in the cars for their models in all the combustion cars as well. And you do get highlights around the car. But I think it could be, with such a sculptured interior, they could have made better use of it. I would like to have seen a light going through here to highlight how cool this looks. There's just a few little things like that that can be built upon with this, I think, in the next iteration of it. The rear, once again, more reminiscent of kind of sports cars. What's nice is versus a lot of EVs, like something like the Mercedes EQA, where your legs are kind of up here because of the batteries. As we said, this car's got the foot garages, so I'm actually sitting very naturally. In fact, more naturally in the rear than you do in the front, as you saw. But head height, because of the sloping roof line, quite limited, I'm 5'10", um, and I've nearly got probably an inch if I'm sitting straight. Um, I'd imagine someone taller would have to kind of seat back into the seat a little bit. But apart from that, I mean, it's nice. It's a, it's a five-seater, uh, somewhat. Also have double cup holder here, which not enough manufacturers do, to be fair, so well done. But adding that in, and you've got your seat heating and your own air conditioning unit here, which is great. In terms of your boot space, it's the usual with your EVs. You've got your mobile charging unit there that takes up a lot of space. You're gonna take it with you. Otherwise, fairly decent boot space, considering the hardware that we have in the rear of the car. So yes, to reiterate, I think probably my favorite EV interior in the world at the moment, probably my favorite EV exterior as well, because it's not trying to be an EV. It's just trying to be a great Audi car. And that's what you get at the end of it. That's what I want every manufacturer to do. So again, clap for Audi, very, very well done. Keep doing this because for a petrol head, this is exactly what we want. 
Now, this is a very, very, very quick car, as you would hope it is. But the surprising thing about the e-tron, and particularly this RS version, is in the RS lineup, where I think it stands, and I think it's gonna surprise you. So let's take this out, let's do a launch control. It's very, very wet on our track today, and you're gonna be surprised just how quick this car is. You always have to be careful when testing, particularly a super EV like this RS e-tron, uh, because of range. We have 74 miles left. I have to be careful because going back would be another 40, but we have to drive spiritedly as well. These aren't problems you have with combustion cars, and it's not like we've been using this car outside the review either, so yeah, you have to be very careful. Um, range anxiety is part of the game here with electric cars, I'm afraid. You have to uh, get used to it. Right, we're going to start with dynamic mode. We're going to turn the traction control off and we're going to do a launch control to just to show you how fast this bloody thing is. Absolute madness. 3.1 seconds. Jeez. That is fast. I mean... That's in fact, you know, that's the fastest Audi RS car I've ever driven. And I've driven the best of them. RS6, Audi R8, V10 Plus, all of them. Forget them. Slow compared to this. This thing does not hang about. Now, of course, we are expecting this, aren't we? Because this is a car to rival Porsche's Taycan Turbo, which is a bloody fast car. And of course, those fantastic underpinnings from that platform shared with Porsche means that we know that the basis of the car is fantastic for great handling with the low center of gravity, foot garages, etc. Now, in reality, how similar is it to Taycan? How much better is it than your normal Audi RS car? Let's answer these questions. First of all, let's talk about speed. The speed is mind-blowing. It is, oh, like I've said in my other Taycan reviews, I've never been one for speed. I like handling, I like sound, uh, the drama of a vehicle in terms of design, etc. Speed has never been my thing. With these cars, particularly the e-tron and the Taycan, the way they pick up speed, the way they seem to sink into the road and magnetically hold on and sh just careen you into the distance is literally addictive. How does one describe it? It's kind of like, you know that sonic boom effect when Superman flies off into the distance? That's what this feels like. It's like a sudden, and you're off. And making you feel like a superhero, well, makes sense for a car like this, doesn't it? It's the type of car that you can imagine Tony Stark would not be disappointed in at all versus one of his Iron Man suits. So speed, no problem, absolutely no brainer, no lag. Uh, the shift between the gears completely indiscernible as you'd hope as well. Let's talk about handling. We're in dynamic mode, okay? First versus your standard Audi RS car. I want to talk about RS6, which I wasn't that impressed with in terms of the steering and the handling versus its rivals. Versus the RS6, this car is frankly speaking in another league altogether. The steering is better like much, much better. I know what the wheels are doing, getting feedback at the right time. I can place the car where I want it to. Thanks to the low center of gravity, we're not experiencing that typical Audi understeer. Brake feel is actually fantastic. It's actually very, very good. Um, I was slightly concerned about that, but the brake feel is very, very natural indeed. But the handling, it's great. The steering isn't quite on the Taycan's level though. The steering on the Taycan, get more feedback I feel generally it feels more natural it gives a bit more confidence but this is good as well and in terms of Audi RS cars like I said the steering's on another level now that low center of gravity oh, the handling that it gives you this is the pull of the EVs to me it's not the speed it is the low center of gravity it is if the platform is good like this platform is brilliant then the handling is it's going to blow your mind, even versus a combustion car. This will blow RS7, RS6, all of them out of the water. 
And you know what? It'll look bloody fantastic doing it. How good looking is this car? Sort the wheels out, it's the best looking EV on the road. I mean, forget the Taycan Saloon versus this. This e-tron GT, it is gorgeous. Now I want to talk about the electric sound because of course it has electric sound in this. Um, it's somewhat reminiscent of what we have in the Taycan as well. So you get this kind of build up, it's a bit Star Warsy, but it's much more reduced versus the Taycan's one. You can hear it that much less. It's definitely there and it's pleasing, but it disappears quicker I feel, it's not as loud. Depending on how you feel about these things, that can either be a plus or a minus. Um, equally, you can turn it off completely within the Audi drive select menus here as well. Now, if we go back into efficiency, I've got 54 miles left. Wow, this is nerve wracking. A lot of reviewers said that they don't like the interior. As you know, I like it. The thing that I don't like about it is you hear a lot more of the road noise and a lot more of the tire noise. Uh, it's raining today, I can hear more of the wipers in the rain, etc. It may be down to the type of double glazing. You can get a thicker one in the Taycan but this just seems louder and less refined in that way. Plodding around normally, I was happier in the Taycan 4S and the speed didn't really feel that different. However, suspension, it's fantastic. It's really nice and compliant, perhaps more so actually than the Taycan. I'll have to test them back to back, but it's a really soft and cosseting ride. And for the flagship RS version of the e-tron, that's great. Audi's e-diff in the back, makes it all feel nice and rear wheel drive. It's clever because you know you can get the power exactly where you want it to be. Again, a differentiator to the RS6 where it's still limiting the power that goes from the front to the rear. This is a really impressive car. It's got the best looks I think of any EV. Audi have gone the right direction. They've gone towards supercar and a good looking combustion car look in an EV. And I really appreciate that. I appreciate the way it looks like an R8 on the road, particularly from that lovely rear end. If I was to buy a new Audi RS car today, it would be this one. I really, really do love it. And I think electric suits Audi more than any other good brand. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this first review of the Audi RS e-tron GT. Pray that I get to a charger in time. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe watching you. See you guys.